And we have a very, very hot topic this week. Activision Blizzard, everybody. Activision Blizzard has had a lot of stuff happening in the news. They don't have Destiny anymore. They lost a lot of CFOs. And then they had an earnings call this past week. And they also fired 800 employees. So they were like, we reported like record earnings for 2018. This is great. You guys should be excited. And then the same day, they basically fired 8% of their staff. That was in not gaming related divisions and everything like that. But instead, they were for more non gaming developments like publishing, esports, et cetera, because they're starting to put more heavy focus on development staff for franchises like Call of Duty and Diablo. But then they laid off 800 people. That's so that's sad. That's a lot of people. That's not just like a few people. Well, you think know, about like, like a, most. Well, is that a division? I don't know what a division like would look like in a gaming studio, but that doesn't seem, that seems like way too much. And then meanwhile, Ubisoft, on the other hand, reported strong profits and didn't fire 800 people. <laughs> so they also did really well. They didn't do that because they Very said nice. that they, quote, are striving to provide a fulfilling working environment for their employees um, after this financial quarter. So it's just interesting to see the differences between all these different companies that are both in the same, in my mind, realm. I mean, Activision Blizzard, despite the fact that, and this is another thing that blows my mind, is Call of Duty apparently did not meet expectations last year, but it was the best-selling game last year. But See, their I expectations were so high that it's like they kind of created this false, like, like they're just they keep trying to push for more and more growth, which is fine. But is there a, maybe there's a ceiling at some point where you just so can't go? I was further. talking to someone recently about how like video games are kind of under the radar and like how much money they actually bring in and make. And I think you have a few people who are business people who see what is happening in the video game industry and they're like, I want to be a part of that. But there's that separation where they're just businessmen and we're, and the, there's artists out there. And it's like there is a happy medium between the two coming together and creating something special. But right now we have these people who literally don't care about video games. They're just looking at stats and numbers and lining their pockets with all this money. And this is what happens. And we have this bubble that is literally bursting at the seams, I feel like, at this point. If it hasn't already bursted. And now we're in this predicament. And, and things like this happen. And then you have people who are coming to these companies who are getting bonuses and stuff for being super, like just be, like going to a new position, like millions of dollars. Like a lot of the top people get like over $10 million a year or whatever. It might be a quarter or something like that. But it's like, why not just take a pay cut, put that back in your products, create something good, you know, get the fans hyped, get everyone to rally around you once again and something, you'll, you'll get even more money. But no, they just want to like, it's just they're milking the industry right now. And I think a lot of us are falling into that. And now I think a lot of us are seeing what's going on. I mean, we've seen all these AAA companies just fall to their knees in the past few months. And it's just it's really sad because that's basically games we grew up on, companies we grew up on. And it's sad to see the industry kind of taking a nosedive. But thank God for the uh, indie game industry. That's right? just yeah, exactly. I, I will say, you know, there's there's a lot to it, obviously. Um, yeah. And I guess kind of with my experience, I've, I know people kind of on both sides. I know people who have to deal with the reality that they were let go and have to start looking for jobs. And I feel I really feel for them. And then I also feel for the people who didn't get let go because now they have so much survivor's guilt is kind of the way that it's been described by, by some people that I know. Yeah. And it's I mean, it's it's nuts. And, and at the same time, you know, we're in a lot of ways kind of just like in the background, we're making like implications and decisions based on what we know. Right? right. And it's not maybe necessarily like a complete picture either. Uh, I was hoping that, that maybe there would be like opportunities to just instead of outright, outright cutting out resources, just maybe shifting them around in different places. Yeah. But at the same time, it just seems like, I don't know. I, I get very worried sometimes when, when companies in general try to focus a lot on short term games or right. short term gains. And sort of lose sight of what long-term profits look like, right? And yeah. that, that's something that I see happen anytime you have just purely business-oriented people at the helm. Because they're trying to think very much like, okay, well, what makes us money right now? And I think that, again, like what the industry as a whole needs is somebody and, and people in general that kind of have that balance. Where they are very creative, but they also have that business sense. And I think that that's the kind of powerhouse combo that makes it so that you can create a studio that puts out exceptional products with phenomenal backing behind it. And I think that's the biggest, the the thing that we see here is you have these these people that are 
you know, executive financial people and their, their mindset is focus on the numbers and the growth and like the, what they learn in, in business school. Like that's naturally going to be what they're focused on. Whereas you have, then have these game developers who are like the creatives and they're all about what can we make that's going to do really, really well now and then later on. And there, I think there's, there's a bit of a, I mean, you see that with, with there's a lot of stuff with like EA and stuff like that, where is it that little bit of a split between like diet, like I, you know, I think Battlefront 2 was again going talking about that. That was such a good, good game, but it was only played because of the business decision to put in these microtransactions. If you took that part out, that was a fantastic game. Like Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is an awesome game, but is also plagued by some just bad choices and like they, you know, they, I think the battle royale part should have been a free thing looking at the market now, like had they just pulled that out and just brought up blackout standalone for free. Like I think they would be way better financially from that, but they had these super high expectations that they put out for themselves of let's make way more than we ever did on the last game that did better than any game we've ever put out <laughs> in the history of games. So it's like they're, they're shooting for the moon and you know, land like hitting goals but not the goals that like they're they're just like setting too high of goals and for that's themselves. What blows my mind. I feel like, like oh we're super successful, but we're not meeting expectations. It's like well yeah. how much do you need at a certain point? Like uh, I mean I mean it's I like you grow, though right? Like you have to like set those goals at the end of the day. And, well, yeah. and I think that at the same time, like I understand where you're coming. Where you're just like you kind of have to take a reality check, right? Like it's not like it's 2009 and you got you got Modern Warfare two making like a billion dollars at a night or whatever. And you right. got Hans Zimmer on the on the uh, on the soundtrack on that and everything, right? Like. The, the layout and the landscape has changed. And I think that how companies kind of adjust their strategy in regards to not only how they release their games, but also what it means to, I guess, extract payment points within games, I think is really unique. So that's one thing, for instance, like I, I appreciate about what they've done from a business perspective with a game like Fortnite, right? They recognized very early on, well, if we just make this game free to play, and make it so that the things that you can pay for are strictly cosmetic, and the people that like the game a lot are more than happy to pay way more than like a sixty dollars price tag or however much we would sell it. And because of how our model is, we can just keep putting out new skins and new content, and we will have a consistent revenue stream, right? Right. And I'm excited about about models like that, to be honest, right? Like I feel like that's great because at the very least, now you get to have all these people that are into games. Who get to at least try the game, and if it's not for for them, then it's not like they lost any money necessarily. Yeah, right. Uh, and and maybe it's a game that they just like to play casually. They can still just jump on with their friends, regardless of what what platform they're on. So those, I guess, are, are things that I appreciate right now about how games are being worked and being marketed and whatnot. Um, I know that doesn't work for every single game, obviously, but it's just a lot of food for thought, especially when you think about also the successes of very small focus teams and the quality of products that they're putting out. Like again, like. You think about a AAA game, and then you think about a game like Hellblade, right? And that's a game that is by no means AAA, but it doesn't look like it and it doesn't feel like it's not right. AAA, right? I'm, I'm hoping what happens with this is that Activision Blizzard sees, like, they, they do this, which is a super hard hit for everybody that was involved, but I'm hoping this helps them focus in on the things that they need to focus in on because Activision has been struggling in recent years with like IPs like they have Call of Duty they had Destiny that's really the only things that they have that are like big heavy hitters Blizzard obviously has a whole bunch more but they have been struggling a little bit because I feel like they've been spreading themselves too thin with a lot of different things like they got super into the esports situations they got all these different mobile experiences they were doing they were just working on a whole bunch of different types of projects and not focusing back in on I mean, in my mind, just like from the outside looking in at their 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 key properties, other than with Overwatch, I think they've done a great job with Overwatch. I mean, that's been incredible the whole entire from start to finish with that. But like products like Diablo, you know, like not, I mean, not knowing what their community is wanting with that because you have an Overwatch games as a service there. Diablo, I think people are wanting that to be more of a single player kind of or co-op experience. They don't want it to branch out too much more beyond that. Maybe you can like kind of do an offshoot with that a little bit, kind of like what Titanfall just did, making a battle royale version uh, in the Titanfall world. You know, that's something that could possibly happen. But don't say like, 
I mean, going back to the Diablo Immortal thing that came out, it's like, don't come out and say, like, this is your next Diablo game. Make that a subset of the Diablo game still coming, but then there's this other thing that's coming out too that you might be interested in trying because it's a you know different look at this franchise. So hopefully they like can readjust themselves, having more money to then put into these products that will make them better games. And then they're taking a year off, so they're not going to have any new Blizzard titles this year other than like WoW Classic and stuff like that they've already announced. So um, I'm cautiously optimistic about 2020, hoping that they kind of yeah. come back on their feet and do something awesome.